Hi everyone. The first chapter that we'll be starting with in pathology and per se general pathology is cell injury. Well, I guess everyone knows the importance of this chapter in two aspects. Firstly, it's a chapter which is going to lay down the foundation of this subject. It's going to make your concept, your core very very strong. And secondly, this chapter is going to get you a lot of MCQs. So either ways, we have to study it really well and in a lot of depth. So let's start right away. Let's begin with cell injury and the first thing, let's get ourselves introduced to the chapter. Let's get a basic hang of the chapter and then we'll start with the different injuries and the different deaths. So the very first thing that we need to know, let's start with basic, okay? Let's start with something which is one liners, easy to grasp. So the first thing that all of us need to know are or what is the cause of cell injury? Why does cell injury occur? What is the most common cause? And please remember, the most common cause of cell injury is hypoxia, which basically means that the oxygen concentration has gone down. I think this is a basic which everyone knows. The most common cause of cell injury is hypoxia, that is the oxygen concentration has gone down. And why has it gone down? That's your next question. What is the most common cause of hypoxia? And that is going to be ischemia. What do we understand by ischemia? Ischemia means a simple thing that the blood supply has been cut off. So simple if we try to make a flow chart out here, the blood supply has been cut off. That is the reason that the oxygen has gone down. Now let's consider further. Once the oxygen goes down, which is the cell or which is the organ which will give up? Which is the cell which is most sensitive to hypoxia? It will give up in three to five minutes. So if they ask you the cell, the name of the cell will be neuron. And if they ask you the organ, the name of the organ will be the brain. So please remember it's the brain or it's the neuron which is actually going to be very very sensitive. In approximately 3 to 5 minutes it's going to give up to the hypoxic situation. Now whenever, make it a habit, not just pathology but any other subject. Remember whenever you study something called most sensitive, make it a point that you also study the other end of the spectrum that is the most resistant part. So which is the cell which is most resistant and that cell is going to be fibroblast. Now remember, I call it the last man standing means it can even withstand hypoxia or oxygen uh, deficiency for 60 minutes and beyond. So it's definitely the last man standing. So I guess this uh, slide is a good overview and it's a good start to the chapter and very very simple. Let's do a quick recap in 30 seconds. What is the most common cause of cell injury? Hypoxia. What is the most common cause of hypoxia? That's ischemia. Which is the cell most sensitive to hypoxia? That's going to be the neurons or the brain. And which is the cell which is most resistant to hypoxia? That is going to be the fibroblast. Having said that, now it's time to have an overview to the chapter. How are we going to deal with it? So obviously we'll be talking about some of the other injury, but what happens whenever we have any injury? Like for example, whenever there's a decrease in oxygen, what exactly is going to take place? So the first thing that the body is going to do the body is going to go in for an adaptation, right? We are always wanting to save the body. We always try to adapt. That's the rule of the universe. So we are first going to adapt to the injury. If, however, the adaptation part of it fails, if it fails, that is exactly when the injury part will start. So which kind of injury are we dealing with first? The first thing that we go into is reversible cell injury. It means that Reversible, basic English, reversible means whatever's happened, there's always a chance of going back. It's always reversible. However, if this reversible cell injury further leads to any progression, what is it going to change to now? It is going to change to irreversible cell injury. It will change to irreversible cell injury. And finally, if nothing can save the patient, what's the final, final outcome that is going to occur? And that's going to be the different kind of cell deaths. Everyone's heard of the cell deaths, like giving you quick examples, necrosis, apoptosis, those cell deaths will occur. So if you want to do a 30 second recap of this chapter, this slide is it. First, the body tries to adapt. If it cannot adapt, there is reversible cell injury. Further going, there is irreversible cell injury. And finally, there's going to be cell death. Simple as it is, but now we go into details. So what's the first topic that we begin with? That is going to be reversible cell injury. That's the first thing and let's begin right away. Obviously, there's a flow chart which I've seen scares a lot of students, but honestly speaking, there's nothing to be scared about 
because it's very simple if you go in a little logical and a uh, in a kind of a methodology so what do i mean by reversible cell injury reason what is the cause of cell injury the cause of cell injury is a decrease in oxygen let's start from there there is a patient who's had a decrease in oxygen now when there is a decrease in oxygen what is the first problem that is going to occur there is going to be mitochondrial dysfunction mitochondria does it take you back to your school days where i don't know how much of school subjects we remember or not but what we definitely remember is that mitochondria was known as something mitochondria was known as the power house of the cell so obviously we had a power house that is mitochondria but here the power house is not working there is a dysfunction that has happened why because the oxygen concentration has gone down so when mitochondrial dysfunction will occur obviously what's going to happen to the atp production the power house is gone the atp production has gone right now i'll take a stop over here and i'll give you an mcq of the previous years question number 1 what is the first change of cell injury you must have seen this in the previous year neat pg question what is the first change of cell injury and that is going to be mitochondrial dysfunction please remember this answer i'll label it over here the first change of cell injury is a problem in the mitochondria because of which the atp production is going to go down and what further because of a decrease in atp production there are three things that are going to happen the first does it remind you of any pump is there any pump which is going to fail so yes the first thing is going to be failure of the sodium potassium atpase pump failure of sodium potassium atpas pump so i won't tell you all the three points all together let's begin one by one so the first thing let's begin first i'll obviously have to discuss with all of you what is the sodium potassium atpas pump going to do so what is the normal pump do so what we'll do we'll make a quick sodium potassium atpas pump out here let's divide it let's first consider the normal aspect about it let's consider the normal part so what do i know about the normal part if i go into a little bit of physiology two potassium are going to penetrate two potassium molecules enter the cell and three sodium molecules are going to exit the cell that's a normal pump repeating two potassium molecules will enter and three sodium molecules are going to exit so let me draw it in dots two potassium are going to enter and three sodium are going to exit where are the ions more the ions are more towards the outside right but this all requires atp that is why i called it sodium potassium atpas pump that is a normal pump but do we have atp in this situation that we were talking about do we have atp out here obviously we don't now in the absence of atp will this pump work it will not there's going to be a failure out here let's talk about a failure situation not a good situation to talk about but yes here we'll have to talk about let's talk about what happens in failure failure means opposite earlier there were three sodium which were going out now three sodium are going to enter earlier there were two potassium coming in now two potassium are going to go out let's make the dots three sodium are going to enter here inside i have three sodium two potassium will exit where are the ions more where do you see more of ions i see more towards the inside inside ions or concentration being more where do you think the water is going to go now where is the water flow going to occur so please remember the water flow will automatically happen on the inside these patients are then going to have a water influx and that is going to be quite an important event out here there's going to be a water influx think of a water balloon think of your favorite festival where you're filling water balloons what do you do so when you fill a balloon with water what happens to the size the balloon becomes big and round right that is exactly what is going to happen because of so much of water influx that has occurred you know what happens to the cell in the cell there is something known as swelling this results in cellular swelling and why has this swelling happened this swelling has happened because of water right so we call it hydropic change this is referred to as hydropic change repeating 
cellular swelling or hydropic change is a question. What question is it? They ask you which is the first morphological change of cell injury. Which is the first morphological change of cell injury and that is going to be the cellular swelling. And I want all of you to pay extra attention out here. Why do I say that? There are two questions. The first question I asked you is what is the first change in cell injury? Just the word change was mentioned over here. Only change. That was mitochondrial dysfunction. Now I am asking you which is the first morphological change. So now your answer is going to change. Morphology means what is morphology? Morphology is the size, the appearance, the structure. How is the size going right now? The size is increasing. There is a swelling, cellular swelling. So that becomes the first morphological change and these are the two differences on these questions that you have to know. Well, the story hasn't ended there. I am still continuing with the same. I am saying that there is a water influx that has happened. So, the first question coming to your mind is because of the water influx, what all will happen? Number one, have we seen cellular swelling? I think that is very evident over here. We have seen the cell has become like a water balloon that is cellular swelling. Some organelles also swell up and that is known as endoplasmic reticulum swelling. The next thing happening is ER swelling. What next? Let me draw the cell. This is the cell and lot of water like a water balloon, lot of water entering it. What is it going to change into? It's going to give out these blebs. Can you see? It's trying to extend like a water balloon tries to stretch. It's trying to stretch and that is known as cytoplasmic bleb. That is going to result in cytoplasmic bleb formations. And finally comes the last change and that is known as myelin figures. I know all of you are always interested in what exactly are myelin figures. So I'll directly show you with the help of a diagram. This happens to be the first image we are seeing in pathology. Although we say pathology is a subject of a lot of colors like pink and blue. But unfortunately or fortunately I'm showing you the first black and white slide. <laughs>